Okay, so 7 is 15% of what number? So this is the question I'm going to be taking a look at in this video, and obviously the topic is going to be um, about percent. Now, most of you out there probably can do basic percent problems, but when it comes to something a little bit more interesting like this, we have to kind of stumble back into our memory and be like, hmm, you know, uh, how do I do this problem? Now, uh, everybody has learned percent somewhere along the line, and percent uh, problems or how to figure out percent problems can be taught in a couple different ways. So if you can figure this problem out the way you were taught about percent and the way you remember about percent, then keep that way. In other words, you know how to solve the problem, you know what you're doing. Um, so don't, I wouldn't suggest that you change what's working for you, but if you're always kind of confused about problems like this, then you want to kind of pay attention because I'm going to give you, uh, my favorite approach to solving percent problems. And of course, kind of have to review basic percent concepts and then we'll, you know, obviously solve this problem, but we're going to get to this in just one second. Uh, but first I'm going to quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that if you're interested. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But um, I offer several courses. So if you need to take a uh, math course, uh, I probably have that course that uh, you can take with me online. Or if you need assistance in a course that you're currently taking, uh, I can uh, help you as well. My, my, my program can help you. But uh, what I think the thing that makes my program unique is beyond my full comprehensive lessons for a wide range of topics, I teach you how to solve the most common problems that you're going to encounter in middle and high school uh, level mathematics and kind of entry level college math as well. So I literally solve thousands of problems. So uh, if you're interested in checking this out, again, you can find a link to that in the description of this video. Now, if you are a math student, I must tell you after decades of teaching mathematics, that one thing is just apparent to me. This is kind of my golden rule of teaching math, and that is note-taking. Because I've just seen it uh, time and time again that those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who have sloppy math notes, no math notes, inconsistent math notes, maybe their dog ate their homework and their math notes, you know, they typically, these students struggle, okay? And I, I would... You know, a student would come to me and they'd be like, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with math, I'm, I'm failing, or of course I know that would be the case. I'd say, let me take a look at your math notes, and then they would give me this look again. They would be like, mm, math notes, what are those? I'm not into taking math notes, I'm too cool for that, <laughs> whatever the case is. So listen, um, if you really want to do well in math, focus on taking great math notes, the benefits are extraordinary. But uh, in the meantime, you need something to take uh, to study from, right? So not having notes is not a good thing. So I actually offer very detailed, comprehensive math notes. You can find those in uh, the description as well, the links to those, but those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry, if you want to check those out. Okay, so uh, you're going to want to have a little calculator available here to help you out and uh, for this particular topic, this little problem. And uh, the thing about it is this, let's say you get this correct, okay? And I suspect a lot of you are gonna get this answer right, but it's this is not about you just getting the answer right. It's about knowing exactly why you know that you have the right answer, like you understand the process. So not just being like, Oh, here's my number. Here's my answer. Did I get it right? Yay, it's the right answer. Because you want to have confidence in your answer. It's not about generating, you know, um, an answer and be like, okay, is this correct? Because there's all kinds of things we can do here. You can go like a 7, divide that by 15 or 0.15 or 0.15 divided by 7 or 0.15 times 7. There's all kinds of manipulations <laughs> what you can do. And typically, a lot of students who are struggling with percent, they'll be like, um, yeah, maybe I need to do this. Or, oh, yeah, maybe it's this. Or it's this. So, again, we want to take the confusion out of it. And that's why I'm going to teach you um, my way, my favorite way of handling percent problems. But, again, if you um, can dispatch this problem uh, you know, with ease and know exactly why you have the right answer, then excellent. But before we get to this problem, let's just do a quick review of a basic percent problem, another problem, and like we'll kind of um, 
Uh, I'm going to use this to show you my technique, my favorite technique, and then we'll, we'll uh, figure out that uh, first problem, okay? So let's just review. 15% um, of 90. Let's say I have this question right here, 15% of 90. What is that answer? So this is the most common uh, type of percent that we typically um, do in kind of everyday life. If something's like, hey, let's say something was $90 and you're going to get 15% off. How much money is that? Well, hopefully uh, most of you know that what we're going to want to do is we're going to change this percent into a decimal. And the way we do that is divide by uh, 100. But here's 15.0% or 15%. You can move the decimal pl uh, point two places to the left and you get 0.15. Okay, it's the same thing as dividing by 100. So we do this. So this is 0.15. And then we multiply that decimal by the value and that will be the answer. So 15% of 90 well, we got to change this percent to a decimal, so that's 0.15. Then we're going to multiply by um, that number, which is 90. And then we go into our calculator, 0 0.15 times 90 is 13.5. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, 13.5 is 15% of 90. Okay, so now I have here another question of what number. Now, let's suppose, right, it's 13 uh, 0.5 is 15% of 90, but let's say I was going to give you this question, all right? 13.5 is 15% of what number? Okay, this is very much like the problem that we're going to be doing. Of course, we know the answer is 90, but let's suppose, okay, we didn't obviously know that the answer was 90. How would we approach it? Well, this is going to be the same type of problem that we're going to be doing here in the second the original problem. So again, this is uh, um, going to be an illustration of my favorite way to approach these percent problems. But again, if you have your way and you know what you're doing, go ahead and calculate that answer. But let's get to this problem, okay? So obviously, we know that the answer is going to be 90, okay? So 13.5 is 15% of what number? Okay, so in algebra, um, when we have this little phrase, what number, that in, is indicating a variable, right? We can just use a variable x. Now, so I'm going to say x is equal to this number, which represents our answer, which, of course, we know secretly that it's 90. Now, if I wanted to find a percent of this number, okay, if I found 15% of some mystery number, that would be what? Well, I would take that 15%, change it into a decimal, that's 0.15, and multiply it by that number. So in algebra um, uh, speak, if you will, that's going to be 0.15 times that number. Okay, that's like finding 15% of 90. Remember, we did 15% of 90, whoops, 90, and that was, of course, equal to 13.5. But here, we're saying 15% of some number is 13.5. Now, in algebra, when you're deciphering like a verbal phrase into an equation, you got to be familiar with these words. So the word is is the same as an equal sign. Okay, so 13.5 is or is equal to 15% of what number? Okay, so what I want you to, uh, to be able to do with these phrases is turn them into basic equations. So let's take a look at this now, okay? 15% of some number, okay, of what number? Well, some number, okay, 15%, I guess, again, we're gonna uh, change this to a decimal. So 0.15 times some number is equal to 13.5, okay? That's what we're saying here. 13.5 is equal to 15% of some mystery number. And now I have this basic equation to solve, all right? So now let's focus in on this guy. And of course, you need to know how to solve real basic, simple one-step equations. But how do I solve for x here? Well, to solve for x, I'm simply going to divide both sides of this equation by 0.15. All right, 0.15. And you get this. x is going to be equal to 13.5 divided by 0.15. And when you plug this into your calculator, you get x is equal to 90. Of course, we knew that, but now we have a definitive way of solving it and understanding, having really high confidence 
in our an our uh, the certainty in our answer. Okay, it's not just guessing. You know, you're like saying, "Hey, is this answer right? <laughs> How about this answer?" And if I say yes, you got it right. You'd be like, "Yay, I got it right!" But wow, that was a close one because I wasn't sure that I had the right answer. Remember, we want to give you certainty in solving these problems. Now, if you got this answer, if you understood with your technique kind of reverse engineer this uh, problem as we just kind of did, right? We already knew 13.5 is 15% of 90. But if you were able to do this using a, um, a method or a rule or approach that you were that you were taught uh, way back in when you were in school for a percent, then keep that way. Okay, there's different ways you can approach percent problems. But the important um, thing here is that you know how to solve them, right? Not just the basic ones, the ones that are a little bit more interesting like this as well. But um, again, if you were confused and you like this technique, then I would highly recommend setting up basic equations to solve percent problems. So now let's go ahead and solve this original problem here. Seven is 15% of what number? So if you want to go ahead and use this as a little pop quiz here, okay, just to check your understanding of learning this or practicing what you already know, go ahead and calculate that. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how I would set it up to do this problem. Okay, I like to set up equations again. So 15%, 7 is, okay, this is going to be an equal sign, all right? 15% of what number? Some number is X. I know this is going to be 15%. It's going to be a decimal, so it's going to be 15, all right, 0.15 of what number, right? That's going to be multiplied by X is equal to 7. So I can write it this way, right? 0.15 times some number x is 7. Okay, that is the equation. And now the easy part is solving this one-step equation. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 0.15. And you get this. So now i got to go into my calculator and take 7 and divide it by 0.15. And you get the decimal, which is approximately 46.6. So that is the answer. And if you got that answer, then uh, excellent. Give yourself a little smiley face and an A plus, 100% outstanding. And uh, if you're able to do this without this uh, method on, you just knew this stuff right from the get-go, but like, oh, I remember percent really good. And you were certain, you had absolute confidence in your answer, then give yourself a few extra stars, okay? You are awesome. You are a percent master. Perfect. Okay. You got to know how to work with percent and obviously, you know, percent proms are more than just the real basic stuff. Okay. But if, um, you know, you like this method as well, then I would strongly suggest keeping this, uh, method because this is a good illustration of how, you know, we, um, how to solve problems by setting up equations, right? Especially verbal phrases you can create. If you can create a verbal phrase and write it as an equation, well, that's the whole purpose of algebra, okay? To set up equations and solve uh, problems by using mathematics. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and wrap up this video. The bottom line is when it comes to percent, you don't, one, you need to know it. It's, it's such a practical, you know, uh, math topic that we use in everyday life, but you just don't want to be guessing, all right? I mean, <laughs> would you be guessing if you're, you know, trying to figure out how much money you're going to be saving. If some salesperson is going to come up to you, but hey, here, you know, 30% of this or this, and this, you got to, you know, know these things. And percent is used everywhere. I mean, just think about where you see percent. It's in interest rates, whether you have a car loan, a mortgage, a credit card, you know, how much interest you might be trying to get um, from your bank account, how much money you want to save. You've got to understand percent. And hopefully this video was a good refresher on the topic for you. So if you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, or liked it in some manner, please do me the favor of smashing that like button 100%, and I would much appreciate that. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. If you like my teaching style, I already have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my math channel. been on YouTube for 10 plus years. Uh, obviously, I love teaching math. So I've got stuff from basic to advanced math organized in various playlists. But if you want my best math help, check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.